Hello team and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions. We are talking about the chapter 2 in this tutorial and we shall be looking forward to discuss some questions which will help you understand better tips, tricks about the examination to be successful ahead. To start with the chapter 2, we have the very first question for our discussion today, that is question number 9. And the 9 question says, consider the following uh, rule, which says, for every SDLC activity, there is a corresponding testing activity. In which SDLC model does this rule hold? I think given that some of the context could be very much clearer right from the question, you should just start recalling as I told you earlier as well. So start thinking of where did you learn about this, which chapter did talk about that, and then we told you that, hey, there are some good practices which can be applied to any development model, and that includes four things. That is, every development activity must have a corresponding testing activity. Each test level must have an objective specific to that level. Then test analysis and design are the two activities which you can start with corresponding development activity and testers should be involved in the life cycle as soon as the first draft is made available. And out of these four, one line is given to you. So I think that would make it very clear and to the point that what is the right answer. Anyways, just quickly look at the options because sometimes these questions do not go straight forward uh, without the options. Okay, so the options here are A, only in sequential SDLC models? No. Only in iterative SDLC model? No. Only in iterative and incremental. As far as the words only are used here, I think you can make a difference that, as I said, this good practices are applicable to any development model, then only is not the word what should be prefixed to any option here, or should not talk only about one particular SDLC model. So of course, to be frank and very straightforward, the right, here, right answer here for this question is D, that is in sequential, incremental and iterative SDLC model. It applies everywhere and it is irrespective of the SDLC model that the four good characteristics are applicable uh, from the point of testing. So with that, we just understood how exactly we can be very sharp at some times that you can really take a decision quickly given that you have good grip on the syllabus. So going through the syllabus is very, very important and that would help you a lot. So. Let's look at the next question here. The next question is question number 10. And the question number 10 is talking about which of the following statements best describes the acceptance test driven development approach. Now, if you talk about this type of question, they have two level of contribution. That means in chapter two, you covered it as a part of testing as a driver. Okay. And then in chapter four, you covered it as the second part of it, which was talking about the last that is 4.5 collaboration based approaches and there we discuss the whole narration of what is ATDD. So it could be a collective question asked to you at any point of time. So please bring both the understanding that what is the process of ATDD and what all the things we taught you in the testing as a driver when we discussed about TDD, PDD and ATDD. And again these type of options are best addressed after reading the options itself. So let's start reading the options. The option A says in ATDD Acceptance criteria are typically created based on given, when, then format. So ATDD, the acceptance test are driven or you know, created as in then format. That's basically to write the acceptance criteria, not the acceptance test. I think that makes sense, right? Because we remember from the 4.5, that is chapter four, that acceptance criteria basically follows this particular approach. But when it comes to acceptance test, uh, this is not what we follow, but yes, ATDD uh, acceptance criteria are typically created based on the given when then format. It looks very absolutely fine because uh, I think I read it as acceptance test. So it says acceptance criteria. Yes, which follows pretty much that approach. But is that acceptance criteria writing in this format is what we call it as ATDD? Uh, that's the question mark. So we'll keep this on hold. Let's go and pick up the B where B is saying in ATDD test cases are mainly created at component testing and are code oriented. I think this should be easily removed off from the list. The reason is if you talk about ATDD, first of all, it says acceptance test driven development. So it is mainly used at acceptance level and it is driven from acceptance criteria. 
That means the tests are created from acceptance criteria, not from the code. And if it is code, then it is, it is not a testing as a driver, right? Because code is written based on the test cases provided. So code is written after the test cases are written and test cases are basis for writing the code. And that is where this gets totally out of the context because both the ways are multiple directional. This option does not make sense. Okay, you don't derive it from the code. You derive it from acceptance criteria. And if it is deriving from the code, then why it is ATDD as a driver? And even if I do that third way, I can say then what is TDD fit? As part of TDD, we may talk about the design and the technical documentations, but not exactly that this ATD falls into that category. So B is straightforward ruled out. Let's talk about C. C says in ATDD, tests are created based on acceptance criteria to derive the development of the related software. I think this clarifies the doubt with the option A we had. We said acceptance criteria are written in this format. That's absolutely true. But that has nothing to do with the approach that is acceptance test driven development. But C makes it more relevant. The reason is the question had a topic to highlight to you. That is which one of this is best talking about acceptance driven development. That is acceptance test driven development. So whenever you see the word best, right? It is very important to cross check that you may feel some of the options are partially correct or almost correct, but not fully correct. And that's the reason they use the word best. So whenever you see the word best, be ready that you may have confusions between uh, two options or two or more options, and you may have conflicting answers. So try to read it again and again, just to feel that which one is much better and really making sense with that of the context. So now if you compare A and C, you would feel that C is talking, making more sense than that of A because ATDD is not about converting acceptance criteria into this format. It's more about deriving test cases from acceptance criteria based on which the code will be written. Okay, let's cross check with the option D. Option D says in ATDD, tests are based on desired behavior of the software, which makes it easier for the team members to understand them. I think that is what you call it as BDD, which is behavior driven development. And that is certainly written in the natural languages so that anyone in the stakeholders can understand it. So with that particular discussion, we can conclude with the right answer on this. So the right answer for this particular question is C, that is in ATDD, tests are created based on acceptance criteria to derive the development of the related software. And that's how sometimes your trickiness can be easily resolved when you're looking at the options in this particular fashion, which would conclude to the right answer. Let's look at the next one. We have one more question for today's tutorial, and that is question number 11. And the question number 11 is talking about which of the following is not an example of shift lift approach. See, I think you should cultivate after listening to these tutorials back to back that how do I read the questions? Like I break every single word so that I can fit every single word into my mind and then conclude the meaning of it. The word not is written in capital letters in my slides, but of course, it is not the way it is going to be written in the examination. In the examination, it will be written in the shorthand itself, that is small letters, and it's very easy to skip that word. So it is very important to read the questions very patiently and very word by word. That makes you very clear that what is the expectation. Otherwise, you would have more than one right answers and you would feel that, I think I had conflicting answers. No, you just did not read the word not. And that is where you had three right answers, which is absolutely true. Because one is not, rest is all, right? So let's look at the options here. The option A says, reviewing the user requirements before they are formally accepted by stakeholder is an example of shift left. Okay, what is shift left? Of course, shift left approach is something when you do them before the schedule timeline. So if you do anything earlier than their expected timeline is what you call it as shift left. That means trying to prepone the activity in the life cycle, which basically helps you to identify defects early in the life cycle or sometime prioritizing the work to get rid of some of the risk and you know deal with them better in the early phases of the life cycle. So yes, uh, reviewing the work products before they are formally accepted is of course an example of uh, shift left because we generally tend to find the mistakes before it is formalized because we start with the draft. Okay, talking about option B, writing a component test before the corresponding code is written, that's also shift left. You're talking about TDD here 
and testing as a driver is preponing testing activities to that of coding and that's where it is a shift left approach. Talking about C, executing a performance efficiency test for a component during component testing. Now, component effi uh, performance efficiency test is a very common thing what we would think as the right answer. The reason is we all understand performance testing happens only after system testing. Okay, and this is not something we can prepone. Not exactly. If you remember from my tutorials, we clearly discussed that performance tester is free to participate early in the lifecycle right from the component level in order to review the code or perform basic checks for memory leaks, wild pointers to detect anomalies, and they can, you know, make the system better right from there. So yes, in fact, this is also a shift left example. Then what is D? The D says writing a test script before setting up the configuration management process. I think now you can connect the chapter two with that of chapter four, sorry, chapter five. In chapter five, we taught you what is configuration management. It includes things like version control, traceability, history management, tracking for changes, right? And all these things are applicable to any sort of work product, be it business work product, development work product, or testing work product. Now, writing automation scripts or test cases or any document, any work product before having the configuration management setup is not a good example of shift left because then who will be responsible for version control and tracking for changes in all these work product. So configuration management itself is one of the activity or one of the tool which basically gets rolled out right in the planning phase because even a plan is a document and a plan can also be revised. And that's where this is not an example of shift left approach. So put together, the right answer for this question is D, that is writing a test script before setting up the configuration management process is not an example of shift left approach. I hope that makes it very clear to all of you and has got a lot of hints to prepare well for the certification. Continue listening to this playlist. You would have a lot of information shared with you with different examples and we have a lot of them. So that's all from this particular tutorial. Uh, should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.